Welcome to another video. Let's solve this absolute value equation with um, two expressions on one side, even if it's not, even if they're not on the same side. It is still hard as long as you have two of them. And you cannot solve this using the traditional uh, plus or minus kind of stuff. No, we can't do that. You have to rewrite each of these in a way that helps you know what region on the number line your solution would fall in so that when you get some answers, you can tell whether that answer is valid or not. So, what should we do? We need to rewrite this. We need to rewrite this. We need to find the regions where they're positive or negative, or you can do multiple trial and errors, but sometimes you don't know when your answer is right. So, the way I want to show you is the recommended way, unless you have a better way. Leave it in the comment below. Let's get into the video. So like I suggested, the first thing you want to do is pick this and say that the absolute value of x minus 1 can be written as a piecewise function. Remember, for absolute value functions, whatever you have inside is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is whenever it is what it is and it is positive. So this only happens when x minus 1 is a positive number or 0 or is a non-negative number. So x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 only when x is great. If you solve this, you'll get x is greater than or equal to 1. So that's the condition here. x is greater than or equal to 1. We'll do the same thing for the second one. So the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is the same thing as this piecewise function. It's going to be what it is. It is what it is. But when is it what it is? When it is greater than or equal to 0. So we'll do that math here also. 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 means that x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So x is greater than or equal to one half, right? Now, the second part is when it is not what it is, it is the negative of what it is. So we can say it is negative x minus one. The same thing here, it should be negative two x minus one. And that happens when this condition is not met, okay? In this case, it is so straightforward that if you solve it, if you equate this to be less than zero, you're going to note, so if you pay attention here, x is greater than or equal to one. Here, it's going to be strictly x is less than one. That will be the other time, okay? The same thing here to be when x is less than one half. Now, you can always do your calculation by changing the greater than or equal to to just less than. Okay, so here we have all the conditions. Now, pay attention. When you're done doing this, the next thing you want to do is create a number line and sketch all of these and see what regions you will need to take care of. And typically, as long as these are linear, you'll get a similar picture every time you solve this kind of a problem. Now, based on the work that we did, the points where the signs change, the points of interest, are at 1 and at 1 half. So, that's why we have 1 and 1 half. So let's look at what happens. Let's try to sketch this graph. If we want to sketch the graph of x is greater than or equal to 1, you're going to start from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade this because that is the graph of greater than or equal to, and it goes this way. I'm done with this. If I want to sketch the graph of x is less than 1, strictly less than, I can put it here, but I won't shade it. It goes this way, okay? I'm gonna make it short so I don't go too far because typically this is what happens. So I'm done with this part. If I go here, the graph of x is greater than or equal to one half will start from here, it will be shaded, and it will go to the right just like this one went to the right. So I might as well just shade this, and that's it. 
So now I have combined these two together here. And the third part is when x is less than one half, which is going to be here. I can as well make a circle here empty, goes this way. So we're going to do three cases. The first case is when the answer is here. Second case is when the answer is here. And third case is when the answer is in the middle. Or we can just go from here to here to here. Right? Okay, let's start from here, since this is the smallest value. So we want to look at what happens here. In this region, everything you're dealing with has to be less than one half. So go back here. Here, when do you think what you're doing will be less than one half, if, it's, if there's an answer? Well, this is greater than one. This is less than one. So if anything is possible with this, it means you'll be using this part. You can't be using this. You have to go back and say, okay, this inequality, this absolute value has to meet this, has to be this, if the answer has to be on the negative, on the less side of, two, of one half. So the same thing, if you're dealing with this, if it is less than one half, it has to be this one. So for this, we're using this to represent this, we're using this to represent this. That makes your life a, a lot easier. Okay, now, so it means if we go back here, we have case one, where x is less than one half. Okay, this is important. So if k, x is less than one half, this is now this, negative x minus one, and plus, it's going to be this one also, negative 2x minus 1. Negative 2x minus 1 is now going to be equal to 5. So if we try and solve this, this is going to be 1 minus x minus plus 1 minus 2x equals 5. That gives us 1 plus 1 is 2, so that gives us 2 minus 3x equals 5. When this 2 goes over here, you have negative 3x equals 5 minus 2, which is 3. That means x equals negative 1. So we've gotten x equals negative 1 here. Now, go back up. Is it possible for x to be negative 1 and for x to be less than 1 half? <laughs> yeah, because negative 1 is less than 1 half. This is a valid answer. So let's go to the next region. The middle region here as long as it's in this region between one half and one we'll accept it as correct so now watch what happens if we go here we want the answer we're getting to be greater than one half it is not greater than one it's in this region it has to be less than one so it's this one combined with this one right yes it's a combination of these two so we're gonna have negative x minus one which is the same thing as 1 minus x, add it to this one, 2x minus 1 equals 5. So here we have negative x plus 1 plus 2x minus 1 equals 5. 1 minus 1 is 0, and negative x plus 2x is just x. Oh, we got x equals 5. Okay, x equals 5 is what we have. But, oh, this is supposed to be case 2. Hey, so in this case, x is not in this interval. Therefore, it is not a valid answer. No. So let's go to the third region. Um, I think I'm going to do the third case here, case 3. For case 3, it has to be here. x is greater than 1. x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So let's see. Here it is greater, here it is also greater. So it's a combination of both the two correct answers. So what do we have? We're gonna have this is positive and this is positive. The combination of the two positives, x minus one and two x minus one. So we have x minus one plus two x minus one equals five. So we have three x minus two equals five. 3x equals 7, 
x equals 7 over 3. Is 7 over 3 greater than 1? Yes. So this is also a valid answer. And just to check, you can always go and go check the original in, um, absolute value um, equation. So here we got, we got negative 1. If you put negative 1 here, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. But the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So here we get 2. You go here, put negative 1 here. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So as you can see, 2 plus 3 is 5. That's correct. Let's test this one. 3 over 7. 3 sevenths minus 1 is the same thing as 3 sevenths minus 3 thirds, which is 4 thirds. So here, we're going to have 4 over 3. If you go here, if you put 3 sevenths here, I mean 7 thirds, right? It's going to be 14 thirds minus 3 thirds. 14 minus 3 is 11. So that's 11 thirds. Guess what? 4 thirds plus 11 thirds is going to be 15 thirds. 15 thirds is 5. So that also is correct. But guess what? If you try the one we rejected, 5, if you try and plug 5 in here, see what happens. 5 minus 1 is 4. 10 minus 1 is 9. 4 plus 9 is 13. This is not 13. So that's how you know it is not correct. And you, you may not, some people would not do this, but this actually makes you more relaxed. <laughs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.